the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. I'm going to start calling this man outside the box Brent because he keeps doing things that are pretty unique to me and pretty outside the box with a little slyness involved and uh, some good slyness, not bad. Uh, he's, you know, he already he's allowing the incoming freshman class to interview and be on the big stage immediately, which could be a great benefit or it could backfire. We won't know until a few years down the road, but for now I think it's forward thinking because it shows the uh, recruits that Brent's willing to put them on the big stage and put them out there to help further themselves, whether it be uh, as players or maybe getting them a little bit of an NIL cut. Uh, but he's now scheduled a clinic with some keynote speakers that are pretty big names. Is Brent sort of filling people out, using these clinics as a filler? Let's talk about it. take over the boom shakalaka boom for the Oklahoma Sooners. They should claim that as a part of their repertoire as far as, uh, I don't know, little catchphrases and fight songs and whatnot, but here we are again. Once again, the Outlaw Posse is in effect riding on in once again as we get ready for another great show here with me, the Outlaw of College Football. That stands for the OCF, also known as Jesse Paul Clark on Facebook, spelled J-S-S-E without the I, and on Twitter at OCF Productions. Now, getting right to it, as I said in the lead up, oh, Brent Venables has scheduled a little bit of a uh, shindig here in uh, Oklahoma. I think it's April the 14th through the 16th or 17th or something. Uh, great little coaches clink now. Uh, normally, I would say, you know, hey, this is probably something that all programs do, and they do. But it's the keynote speakers that he scheduled here that have me thinking, hmm. You know, like Arsenio Hall used to say back in the day, if you ever watched his show, uh, he used to compete really good with old Johnny Carson, who was a legend. But old Arsenio thought Hall used to say things that make you go, hmm. But it seems like he's got some uh, keynote speakers coming in that have a a uh, pretty well-known niche for one side of the ball or the other. One being Dan Mullen as an offensive uh, guru back in the days. You know, he uh, coached up Dax Prescott, who went on to uh, Dallas Cowboys fame. Not so much today, but uh, he used to be pretty good. But anyway, and uh, the big one to me is Jim Leonard. He's bringing in Jim Leonard as a keynote speaker as well. Jim Leonard also is without a job in college ranks now. Uh, or any kind of coaching ranks. Now, um, Dan Mullen does have a job, um, I don't know, was ESPN or Fox or somebody like that. And uh, they say he's pretty satisfied with that. So he, he may not be the uh, guy that's being targeted, but the coaches that are being brought in here, the big name coaches, um, oddly enough, neither one have a job in coaching. Uh, go ahead and address Dan Mullen first and get that out of the way because in my opinion, that would be a huge mistake. Dan Mullen has a lot of luggage and a lot of baggage that's been attached to him since uh, his Florida Gator days. And when he was at Mississippi State as a head coach, he done wonders there. Done real good at a program that's hard to win at. And uh, But for some reason or another, he just fell off as far as being able to recruit players. I mean, it's a, it's a well-known fact that Dan Mullen does not like to recruit. And at this point in the college game, it's all about recruiting. So in my opinion, I would not hire this guy based on that fact alone. Not only that, but there's some shadiness and weirdness about him and his wife. As you know, I've expanded on this numerous times about his uh, player kissing on the mouth, bunny humping wife. Um, throw up some graphs here off and on as well so you can see some stuff that's going on. But <laughs> don't hire them more, please. I just don't do it. I mean, even if they, even if the offense gets better, man, I just don't know if it's worth the baggage that's going to come later. 
You know, it's just like Bob Petrino or, or Rick Patino or someone like that. They're great coaches and getting players to play for two or three years, but then, you know, going down the road, you start seeing ramifications that you that are sort of embarrassing. But getting to Jim Leonard. Jim Leonard, everybody knows his work at Wisconsin was exceptional. Now, a lot of people will come back and say that uh, Wisconsin's defenses didn't really have to play a lot of high-powered offenses, but um, Ohio State's usually pretty good. Michigan's offenses is usually decent now, but so but there are a lot of generic vanilla offenses in the Big Ten, although I wouldn't say uh, Purdue's that generic. They have a pretty um, offensive-minded coach, and Jeff Brom, or did have, I'm not sure if he's still there or not, but I really think that Jim Leonard would be an exceptional get and hire. And if they're bringing him in here to be a speaker, um, there's no telling what's going to go on behind the scenes while he's here. As you know, a lot of people are not happy with the Oklahoma defense right now because they didn't do too well last year, but it was their first year under Ted Roof and Todd Bates. And that's another guy I want to get to, Todd Bates. A lot of people are saying, I see in the comment section on uh, the PG show, I was watching it. This is where I really got the idea for this podcast. By the way, that's a great podcast, The PG Show. Check him out. I was watching his show, and I saw where a few of his uh, posters and commenters were talking about Todd Bates and how if uh, anybody deserved the job, it was Todd Bates. If they're going to get rid of Ted Roof, it better be Todd Bates, and, and that's the only guy that you could hire without it being a miss. I'm like, Really? How can you say that when Todd Bates has never had a defense of his own? He's, he's a co-defensive coordinator right now. How can you say that anybody, anything else would be a miss? It sounds like some kind of an agenda to me, and I hope that's not the case with some of you fans out there um, because <clears throat> it should be about the best candidate. It should be about who is the most qualified. It shouldn't be about legacy or race or any of that other stuff. Any of that political stuff. It shouldn't be about politi politicizing it or anything. It should be about who is the best coach for the job. Who's most qualified? Jim Leonard? Ted Roof? Todd Bates? Think about it. Jim Leonard's defenses have been ranked up in the top ten, probably top five, every year with Wisconsin. So to say that Todd Bates is the only guy that we should consider anybody else is a miss, it reeks to me of some kind of um, agenda that I don't know. You guys and girls tell me, it just, that just doesn't sound like to me that you would hire, that you want to hire Todd Bates over a Jim Leonard. Just my opinion. But <clears throat> going forward, once again, like I said, Brent Venables has showed he can think outside the box. A lot of these moves, like um, allowing the Incoming freshmen to interview some of the old guard are not too happy about that because they see it as you know um, Patronizing and placating to the diva atmosphere and they could be right. We'll see if it's a mistake I'm sure that down the road Brent Venables will learn from that mistake as a lot of people do Everybody included all great coaches Bob Stoops, Bud Wilkinson, Bear Bryant, Nick Saban Barry Switzer they all made mistakes, and they all learn from them usually. They usually adapt. That's what great coaches do. They make mistakes, and they adapt. Or they get stagnant, and they adapt. And they did it back in the day with Newt Rockney and his offenses at Notre Dame, on into Bud Wilkinson, and uh, on up into Daryl Royal, who come up with the wishbone offense, and then Bear Bryant saw it and took it and decided to adapt to it because that was the offense at the time and changed his uh, offensive philosophy on into Nick Saban, who was really apprehensive about the RPO offense and the, the up-tempo offenses, but he saw what they were doing to defenses and whatnot. And Nick Saban, while he didn't like the offensive philosophy, he adapted to it somewhat. And that's what great coaches do. They adapt and they come up with their own ideas. Like Nick Saban, you know, he'll bring in a keynote speaker that's not even football-related. It's just some kind of motivational speaker to get into the psyche of his players it's just you got to think outside the box and make your own mark sometimes you're going to piss people off when you do that but down the road when you start winning games and you get a traditional powerhouse program back where they need to be 
in the top five every year contending for national championships, those naysayers and those backbiters will go away and they'll suddenly become your best damn friend. <laughs> but you guys and gals, tell me what you think about all this. Drop in the comment section. Let me know exactly what you think about this coach's clinic. Do you think it could be a, um, a filler for maybe getting a coach to come in here and replace Ted Roof when he uh, eventually resigns? Because I think Ted's a little up in age. I mean, he's like 64, 65. Drop in the comment section. Let me know. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Also, there's a heart down here. If you don't mind, hit that. Throw me a few dollars in the coffers. As always, KMC to all the other teams. Class is now officially dismissed.